Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show. We're so honored to have on singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, two-time Grammy Award winner, Denny Lane. Denny, thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. So so how's it going with the uh, songs and stories tour that you've been doing uh, just all well, over the country? I've only just started doing it, actually. I haven't done this, for, 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 you know, pre-pandemic, really. I did the band thing for a while, and I started doing this, and then I went off the road. So I, I did one the other night. It was great. You know, I do, I do an hour with a break and that kind of thing, and then another hour. So it's I get to do a lot of songs that I normally wouldn't do because, you know, I'm pushing myself as a songwriter, and you don't want to get into the stories too much because that takes away from the music. But it works, you know. It really works. So. Well, you know, it's it, your musical history is so amazing, Denny, as a founding member of the Moody Blues and also a founding member with Wings. And, uh, you know, I mean, come on, with, with Wings alone, with Band on the Run, over six million copies sold? Yeah. <laughs> That's not a bad run. <laughs> it's not a bad run, really. But like I say, you know, I'm... I'm I'm just more involved in the music side of things. Make sure I mean, band on the run. I don't know. I mean, it, that was a strange one because we didn't know what was going to happen with that because we didn't have a band. All of a sudden, we ended up in Lagos, just me and Paul and Linda. So it was a you know it was kind of a yeah. Well, we do it anyway. See what happens. But surprisingly, so it was like the most popular one. I think. Well, so, you know, and I've got to bring this up for you, Denny, you know, being in so many different bands growing up and starting to play guitar at only 12 years old. But how did it feel, you know, to be opening for the Beatles, opening for Jimi Hendrix, and then be in one of the greatest bands of the 1970s with Wings? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, a lot of these things you don't plan, you can't plan anything. I just happened to know Paul, I knew the Beatles. In the you know, I mean, prior to joining Wings, let's put it that way, and we had met in Birmingham. Bev Bevan was one of the drummer at the time, so you know, hello, Bev Bevan, and um, he remembers it. Revolving stage, the Beatles came on, we went off. You know, the microphones didn't work because of speakers leads cab cables flew out, and John was pointing, swearing at the sound man. You know, you remember certain things, and then all the autograph books, which they didn't sign, by the way. They had all the roadies signing. Sorry, folks. But, um, you know, so we became friends from that. As soon as we moved to London, we all met up and uh, it went from there. But like I said, you know, going off the tangent a bit, that's what people don't know so much about me right. and Paul. Is that we actually knew each other really well in the 60s. We used to sit in the clubs and just talk about music all night. You know, it was, so it was, it was pretty easy for me to work with him. Well, you know, especially for you too, Danny. I mean, I mean you know, yeah. with you and Linda and Paul McCartney, you know, writing these songs together and, and creating these hits that, that, you know, still a musical catalog from Wings, yeah. from the Moody Blues. And also you played in Ginger Baker's Air Force. Yeah. Well, again, you know, I knew Ginger from, well, the early Chuck Berry tour that we did. Well, that's when Go Now was kind of going up the charts, and Ginger and Jack were in the opening acts, the, the Grand Bond organization. So, wow. again, it's who you know. It's like what goes around comes around. And and, and so, I mean, it's just, um, it, I fell into that because of, I was actually visiting down um, on the Traffic's Cottage, and Ginger and Eric had turned up to do some rehearsing, and a little bit of a jam with them. And then and then that led to, you know, me having a party at my house and Ginger saying, oh, I'm putting a band together. You want to be in it? I said, sure. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, I don't plan anything. I don't go out, really, I don't go out looking for anything. It just comes to you, you know. So, and, and again, I think it's who you feel comfortable being around, you know, that's more important than anything, really. Well, you know, and being in your early bands also, Denny, I've, I've got to ask you this question that has just been stumping me. Back with Denny and the Diplomats, why did you all dye your hair blonde? <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, not to mention the black mock crocodile skin suits and the silver winkle pickers. I mean, See? you got to remember, in them days, everybody had, nobody had the real name. That's why I ended up with the name Denny Lane instead of Brian. But, 
No, everybody made the names up. I think the Beatles were the first to come along where they actually used, you know, of course their name was made up, but their names of individuals weren't. So, but if you were a lead singer in a band, you usually had that. And um, that's what I was. So I, was, I became Denny Lane because, well, yeah, what else are you going to do? We've got to think of a name. So that was that. But, uh, you know, as I say, Bev was in that band. When when Go Now became a hit, Bev was sitting at home watching the telly, watching us do. He said, that's it. So he decided to get himself together and, and got in with, uh, you know, Jeff Lynn. So, I mean, these things, we, all, we all kick each other up the backside to get, you know, to get things going. And it's, it's a good, healthy uh, situation, really, between musicians. Well, and I got to ask you, Denny, well, with, you know, the Songs and Stories tour, that's uh, going to be going throughout this year. And obviously you're going to be here at City Winery on February mm -hmm. 3rd. Mm -hmm. From your catalog of songs, how do you choose which songs to play each night and which stories to share? Because isn't there supposed to be an autobiography coming out eventually too? Well, I don't know if I'll ever get around to your autobiography because it's never over. But the thing is, I first of all, I, I do the songs I enjoy playing, you know, or enjoyed writing. Um, more uh, the ones that I know the best is obviously what I do because you know I don't have to rehearse them that much. But as far as the stories go, yeah, there's loads of stories, and and you you don't want to overdo the sort of stories to the point where you know it's more talk the music. But I get to I get to do songs like I said off my solo albums. The second half of my show is more or less that. Right. And the first half is like the few from the Moody's, old Moody's album, Magnificent Moody's, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then a few wing songs, you know, that I was on. And um, at the end, I kind of got the crowd going with a bit of band on the run, right, got them singing it. I said, look, I don't, <laughs> I don't sing like Paul McCartney. Come on. So that kind of thing. But, but I really like doing songs that they don't even know that much, mm -hmm. you know. And then you get you get the true sort of you get the truth really then from the audience. And if they like a song that they don't know, then you know you've scored, you know. So I mean that's that's the thing. And I can move that around at, at will too mm -hmm. on any show because you can't really do that with a band, you right. know. So you you have that that kind of um, freedom to do more on your own. And and again, it's the song stripped down to where there was originally written, you know, most of the time anyway. And I think that's really when you see how a song holds up, when it's down to its bare bones with the lyrics and a guitar and with you up there. And I got to bring up, too, as, as you've been such an innovator through your entire musical career, Denny, that you started like the whole string ensemble kind of thing before Electric Light Orchestra even started their great run. Well, again, it's a, it's a small world because I knew all those guys. I actually got together with some of those people to come up with this idea before they even formed that that lineup, and there was there was talk of it that they had a few other people involved, and I got together with them and then thought no, uh, Steve Steve Gibbons was in it, and mm -hmm. anyway I ended up coming out with it later because you know obviously influenced by George Martin and the Beatles what they were doing. And I was always that sort of person that, you know, you don't want to just copy a style of music and then be a second copy, you know, second best. So from all the influences you have, you make up your own little act, you know, that's right. you. So always classical. I was brought up on all sorts of music, with my sisters and that. So it was all different styles that I amalgamated. And that was one of them as classical stuff. And I also like, um, you know, singer-songwriters that do expand a little bit with, with ideas. You know, you see what I mean? I mean, so I, that was the string band idea. But, yeah, I sort, of, I sort of saw it coming before I actually did it with other people. I mean, there's a lot of people who are getting into that. Um, do that Beatle influence again, I think. But again, it, it worked for me because I was, I was doing the folk scene at the time. And it was more or less like mm -hmm. a folk trio with strings and i don't think anybody right. had done that as up to then so you know that was that was right. the unique part of it really yeah. well you know and that's with the moody blues once again visionary you know trend setting band and then with wings 
you know, when, when I was listening to Wings growing up, Denny, I felt like they were taking what the Beatles had done to the mm -hmm. next level. You know, what you guys were bringing musically and yeah. with style and everything. It was it was a little more rocking, a little raw. Yeah. And, and, you know, for my yeah. generation, I appreciated that. Cool. Well, the thing is, of course, you didn't have the, the writing, the, John and Paul, but I and I didn't write as, as, as much as John did. So, I mean, I wasn't really a writer. I mean, Paul encouraged me to, to do more writing. Um, and that gave it a little bit more of a thing. But it was really kind of Paul, you know. So he was he was carrying on with his influence that he had in the Beatles. I mean, a lot of, um, yeah, it's the same with the Moody Blues. When I left the Moody's, they had a style. And when Justin and John came in, they just jumped in on that style with different songs. But that's they developed that same style, you know. It's kind of concept sort of music, you know. And um, same with the Beatles. I mean, yeah, as you say, he took it to the next level. He would have taken it to with the Beatles if he'd stayed. Hmm. Simple as that, really. And and I was easily, you know, led into that because again, if you know somebody and you know, we're all brought up in the same music. You know, we all learned from Buddy Holly and Elvis and all that stuff. Chuck Berry. So we were all uh, in the same bag musically, and that was very easy for me and him to just sit down and write a song like in in ten minutes, really. You know, so but I mean, he he would do most of the writing. He'd come to me with it, and but you know, I'd just jump on it straight away. I wouldn't be like, well, "What's this all about?" I don't get that. You know, it was very easy to to work with him from that point of view musically. So it, it was really. Well, you also brought in the gypsy jazz influence, and so one of your favorite players was Django <laughs> Reinhardt, right? Oh yeah. Well, I started off in school. Um, I didn't have, no, I had to tune my guitar, but there was a guy there whose brother was a jazz guitarist. He taught me how to tune it, and then I didn't have any lessons or anything. So I was then into doing. You know, I'd, I'd go out and do the odd thing, a guest appearance maybe. And then I would play all the old songs I was brought up on. And it was usually, you know, jazz. It was it was kind of Django, but it was also, you know, all of me, man, I take all of, all those kind of songs. Wow. You know, the, that once you come home, Bill Bailey stuff. It was all that sort of trad jazz almost mm -hmm. um, mixed with Gypsy. And, and I enjoyed doing that. My, one of my biggest... Uh, it, Influences, funny enough, was Ella Fitzgerald, scatting, all that stuff. So I mixed it up, but but I got into rock, obviously, through school and Buddy Holly, and 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 that kind of took me off in that direction. But to this day, you know, I still love gypsy jazz. I've got a couple of gypsy jazz guitars, and when I practice, I really do practice that stuff, just like I do Spanish style, you know, flamenco. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, really, it's really a workout on the guitar, and, I, and I've got to ask yeah. you this too, Denny. You know, with the with the uh, songs and stories tour, uh, mm -hmm. do you think there might be a a documentary video, or maybe in your spare time, maybe some new songs and stuff coming out too? Yeah, hopefully. Actually, I started off the, the other show the other night with a, a little piece of music that is, you know, part of a new song. I haven't got the lyrics to it, and that went down well. It's just a matter of like it's it's, it's almost like a paid rehearsal for me in some ways. <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, I like doing things like that. And people do comment and say, that's a nice piece of music. And so I, I know it's not because they've heard it and they, you know, before. It's it's on the merits of, of the actual music. So that's it. We always used to put our sets together. If, if the audience didn't like a song, we wouldn't put it on the next set. And, you know, all that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. that's what well, you I, do. I know that a lot of people are going to want to see you live. Uh, on tour this year with Denny Lane, uh, songs and stories. And so, is there best place to go? You know, for on your website and social media and everything, Denny. Well, as I say, it's, it's been a few years since I've done it, so we're starting to build all that back up. It's mainly just Facebook at the moment, okay. and, and you know, we've got a lot of followers on that. But again, you, you when it comes to venues. You have to do your own. It's like the Moody's. We always had to do our own marketing. You can't just rely on everybody else or just assume you're going to sell. You know, and half the fun of doing shows is doing your own advertising, your own marketing, coming up with ideas. 
I mean, the guy who managed the Moody Blues was all that. He was all, he was all about that. Some outrageous idea sometimes just to get the police to arrest you. Oh, yeah, you're going to play out under the town <laughs> bridge tonight with the generators. And then they'd come. Then you'd get the photographers, you know. So, I mean, that's what we used to do. It And still to this day, I, I, I like dreaming up little things to do sometimes to, 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 to attract people. It's not just about, you know, being them coming and seeing a show. I like them to know the stories. I like them to see that, you know, I'm enthusiastic about it because I am, you know, it's a, it's really great fun for me to do this, like I said. Um, and I don't know if I'll do the band thing for a while, but I'm just really going to enjoy this. I'm looking forward to all of these shows. Well, you are a rock and roll hall of famer, Denny, so you can kind of do what you want to at this point, right? Well, again, that's not necessarily true. I mean, you can't just rest on your laurels, as they say. You're only as good as your last gig. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so I never do that. I don't take anything for granted in this business. I'm, I'm lucky to be still in it. It's like a lot of people aren't. And, and you know, you, I've always lived it. And, and the challenge is what it's all about. If Without the challenge, you don't enjoy it. It's got to be that. It's got to be. I'll tell you what, fun. you are a musical legend, Denny, and it's an honor to have you on the show. Can't wait to see you live and in person and hear these great stories. Okay. I still think you need to do the autobiography in your spare time between <laughs> new songs and tours and everything else you've got going on. But Denny, oh. thank you so much for joining the show. You're welcome, man. Thanks a lot. Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show. 